Good afternoon to you, Mark Set of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday afternoon, August the 22nd, 2016. A lot to go over today, so let's jump right in. First of all, this is what the sea surface temperature anomalies map looked like back on June the 2nd of this year. Had pretty cold water compared to normal up in the northern Atlantic, a little bit of a cold ribbon developing in the tropical Pacific, and the main development region was just starting to come to life with warm anomalies. If we fast forward to today, pretty big difference. You can clearly see the Atlantic has warmed overall, especially the northwest Atlantic, parts of the Caribbean and Gulf as well. And then this La Nina signature, it's not technically a La Nina yet, La Nina meaning the abnormal cooling of the Pacific. It's got to reach certain thresholds and be at those thresholds or below for a certain amount of time. But overall, the coldness here definitely reducing the wind shear, generally speaking, and the sinking motion across the Atlantic Basin. Uh, certainly better conditions in the Atlantic than we had last year. Better conditions for development, which might not necessarily be better for people, obviously, that could be in harm's way. But once again, June 2nd, August 22nd, quite a difference. And that has led to a pretty big uptick in the tropical cyclone heat potential, the upper ocean heat content, we call that very warm water, not just at the surface throughout all of this area, but also reaching several hundred meters in some cases deep, so that when a hurricane comes along and churns up the ocean, it's just churning up more warm water instead of upwelling colder water and self-destructing. So all of this really setting the stage for an active period ahead. Well, what's going to happen and what will the players be? Well, let's take a look. Again, a lot on the agenda today here is Fiona. This is 99L and this down here is 90L on its way to becoming Tropical Depression 7 and eventually, well, it's probably going to become Hurricane Gaston, uh, Tropical Storm Gaston first. Uh, a little trivia for you, back in 2004, there was a Hurricane Gaston that formed and came into uh, parts of South Carolina here and then moved on up into the Virginia area causing flooding believe it or not in Richmond and I was in the eye of that hurricane and provided some of the data that helped them to upgrade it to hurricane intensity we had a barometric pressure of 985 millibars on the ground there at Bulls Bay where the eye came over it's uh, part of our 2004 series of work so a little trivia for you there so let's take a look at what's happening. This is yesterday in the Atlantic Basin, the wide shot, colorized infrared. This is 99L. Look at it today. This is very remarkable. It has developed deep convection and has a lot more of that look to it, so to speak. Still rather disorganized overall, but it's certainly a marked improvement over where it was this time yesterday. Here's Fiona and what's left over of that. And then here is the big system going to develop into Hurricane Gaston at some point. Now, I've shown this particular graphic several times. I think this is a very useful tool in seeing these large pockets or this uh, group here, the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies, I believe they refer to them as pouches. And in fact, they can identify them over Africa. And these big pouches or pockets of energy, however you want to call it, an envelope of energy and moisture. Uh, these are very impressive, large areas here. This is 90L over here, this is 99L. And then look at this, looks like a little tropical storm symbol uh, representing Fiona there. But this pulling in moisture now all the way down uh, to the, near the equator, I mean, that's incredible. Huge area. So why are models like the GFS not developing it? I don't know. They mentioned dry air. In the tropical weather outlook, well, there's some dry air coming in this way, but everything's moving along very progressively, not too fast. We're not seeing this race across the deep tropics like we saw with the system that eventually became Earl, for example. I mean, that thing was hauling the mail. You remember that. So I really don't know what the holdup is. Not necessarily complaining. Certainly, we don't want these things to form and then you know, go devastate somebody, but understanding the whole process is part of a better knowledge base overall. And when you see what seems to be systems that are ready to go and they don't, it makes you scratch your head a little bit for sure. So a lot of energy out there waiting to be tapped. Hey, look up here. 
By the way, nice frontal passage, uh, lower dew points, and total precipitable water values dropping over the northeast United States. But that's going to reverse quickly, and that can have a big impact over here in what happens with this system if it develops. You know, the computer models are so waffly right now, I'm not going to talk about what may happen with this system except to say that if you're in the Lesser Antilles and eventually the Greater Antilles in the Bahamas, pay attention to this because it's probably going to bring at least an increase in squally weather, rainfall, gusty winds, and that kind of thing. And beyond that, let's give this another day or two to see what happens and whether or not the models settle down a little bit and try to come to some kind of an agreement. The larger perspective, Fiona here, 99L, 90L, more energy trying to gather over Africa and move its way to the west over time, kind of like looking into the future. It is late August. This is what we expect. As I mentioned, upper level winds, pretty favorable right now over the system. Uh, Anticyclonic flow aloft, that fanning out. So that's favorable. The same holds true down here near where future Gaston lies at the moment. Over here we do have cyclonic flow, so this isn't necessarily favorable. But you can see the overall area of red has shifted more into the northern latitudes here. I'll draw over it with yellow. And we have a lot more green and yellow overall, meaning that it's not quite as unfavorable. And in fact, some areas are very favorable for development. So everything's changing slowly but surely as we thought that it might. The vorticity signature... A little bit elongated, but it's still there, pretty impressive. This is very impressive and well on its way to developing. There's Fiona. And then look over here in the eastern Pacific, Tropical Storm K dissipating uh, over the Pacific. Not going to be a problem for anybody over there. Here's the forecast model plots for Invest Area uh, AL90, Atlantic 90. We just call it 90L to be short, I guess. Now, why is it curving up like this at this angle instead of just coming on across and posing an eventual threat to land areas? Not saying there's a 100% chance that it won't affect land areas, but overall, the pattern, again, there's just not that much strong ridging over the Atlantic to keep this moving on a westerly course, and the early development of it kind of feels that weakness, and the larger steering currents are going to be pushing it in that direction. We'll watch it because it's still way out there, and again, you never say never until they are curving away from land areas. But I'm going to tell you what, this is going to be a long-lived hurricane eventually. I say going to. I mean, it's pretty sure of it. And the models are certainly indicating that. And it's going to be out over the water for a while and really rack up some ACE points, the accumulated cyclone energy points that sort of define the quality of the season. And uh, so this is going to do a good job of that over the next few days. With it being Monday and nothing looming large on the horizon, at least for the time being, figure out we'll do the This Week's in Hurricane, This Week in Hurricane History segment. I think you can imagine in late August here, this week, what would it be? Back in 1992, Hurricane Andrew. This is the infamous track from that system. You can tell exactly what happened. Probably had pretty strong high pressure sitting out here blocked it from turning north. It almost died out in this region. Uh, the tropical wave began out here in the deep tropics, sheared apart for, over this area, then conditions reversed, and on it went to make history here as a landfalling Category 5 in South Florida, and then a strong Category 3, I believe it was, in parts of Louisiana. Devastating hurricane for sure, and something that people will never forget generations later uh, this will be one of the benchmark storms in U.S. history, and certainly for Florida. So this is the satellite picture of the perfect hurricane, if you will. Very small in nature over, uh, overall, very you know compact. Uh, the radius of maximum winds here was very small. And so luckily, Greater Miami escaped the worst of the wrath of this incredible storm. Uh, I was just beginning my college days in North Carolina, I thought about driving my little Toyota Corolla down there, but I didn't, thank goodness, or I probably wouldn't be here today doing this update, because this is what happened. This is a large trailer park, certainly not very substantial structures even in an 80 mile an hour hurricane, much less something with gusts well over 200. We all saw the pictures, won't rehash that too much, but I do want to talk about this for a moment. The radar signature here 
This is what happens when you have a perfect ring of convection, the eye wall, closed off like a donut. I mean, this is just, I don't ever want to see anything like that. And I'm speaking absolutely the truth. There are friends of mine, Josh Morgerman, iCyclone, as you might know him. He lives for something like this. Not the death and destruction, but the experience of it, to be able to be in something like that. Why? I don't know. I mean, why do people jump out of airplanes or climb Mount Everest? Equally dangerous things, if you ask me. Uh, but he does take pressure readings, and he documents them. But boy, when you see something like this, I don't want to be in anything like that. I would certainly go and set up the equipment and then probably hide under, you know, hide under something that itself is under something, really, because the wind scares me more than anything else because you just can't see it coming. You know, you get these monster gusts, and you can't see it coming. You might hear it two or three seconds before it gets to you. And I've been in stuff like that. Hurricane Charlie is the closest I've been to anything like this. And that downburst, stabbing, lethal wind, like explosive uh, wind, uh, no thank you. And so something like this I hope we don't see again, especially in a major metropolitan area. There is the airport up here, and Greater Miami lies in this region, just missing that devastating core of strong winds. Now, you can imagine that's the radar signature from 92. If we were to have something like that again today, the only benefit, certainly this is about it, the scientific community would be able to gather so much incredible critical data at landfall with mobile-based radars that will be certainly coming to something like that, the land-based fixed radars from National Weather Service, and certainly the, uh, the land observations. Are, our group would be setting up anemometers, for example. So at least if something like that comes again, it will be very well documented and help in the future for better prediction down the road. Uh, you got to look at the silver lining because something like that truly is frightening and remarkable on a very dangerous side. All right, so there you go. That's what, and there's a lot I could have covered, but Andrew kind of sticks out this week in hurricane history. All right, well, that is it from me for today. A lot to watch, nothing consolidating yet. A lot of sort of mystery and intrigue surrounding what's going on with 99L. I'll certainly stay on top of it. And I'll be reporting on it on these video blogs all week long, and we'll see what happens. Have a great rest of your Monday afternoon. Again, I'm Mark Sutteth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, and we'll talk again tomorrow.